In this week's video I show you how to assess an MR of the foot for osteomyelitis and if you liked the video hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. The reason for a video about ugly feet is this November poll here over on my Patreon page where the supporters of my channel can vote every month on a topic for me to cover. So if you don't like ugly feet don't blame me just blame my patrons or well still blame me because at I gave them the option to vote for this topic. Anyways, the good thing is, as radiologists, what we see is way less ugly than the stuff our clinical colleagues have to endure during their daily practice. And with that, let's start into the theory first. Typically, you have some kind of an ulcer or defect on the, in the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and even a positive probe to bone test and the clinician wants to rule out osteomyelitis. One thing to note is that on conventional radiographs it might take up to 10 days or 2 weeks or even longer until you can see changes of osteomyelitis. Therefore we frequently get an MRI for this question. Now this is the ulcer here and the first thing you will notice on a bone is just some bone marrow edema at the region where the cutaneous defect is. If it's um, going on then at some point the bone gets infected. You can see this here in green and you still have some surrounding bone marrow edema that is going far deeper into the bone than the actual infection. That is what we call the reactive bone marrow edema here in blue and as you can see even if the disease is long-standing you still have more bone marrow edema than osteomyelitis. This might go on and go on and go on until eventually the whole bone is affected and maybe even the adjacent joints. So basically what we can have is the following thing. You have an ulcer and just reactive bone marrow edema but no osteomyelitis yet. This is not uh, uncommon and you will frequently see this. Then in long-standing disease you might get a complete infection of the bone, a osteomyelitis of the whole bone like in this case here. Everything is affected and the most common scenario will be something like this where you have the ulcer, you have a reactive bone marrow edema which is very extensive and reaching far into the bone and then you have an area of osteomyelitis here. Now how can we differentiate osteomyelitis from reactive bone marrow edema and for this we just need two sequences and this is the STIR sequence and the T1 weighted sequence without gadolinium. So this here is the first patient, an old one, and here is the ulcer, and we don't really see any clear signs of osteomyelitis on this conventional radiograph. As you can see there is an awful lot of sequences, however it's a term or stir and a T1, and then the same two sequences in an other orientation, and then in this case they gave gadolinium and even did some subtractions here, but it's not really necessary. Now let's start off with the two important sequences. So here we have the, the TIRM sequence, which is a fat-saturated fluid-sensitive sequence, and here is a T1-weighted sequence. Now let's zoom in a little bit here, so we can see the ulcer here with some air inside the soft tissues. And the first thing that you will notice is this extensive bone marrow edema in the distal phalanx of the greater toe here, reaching up to the joint. And now the next thing that you want to do to distinct this from, to separate this from osteomyelitis and reactive bone marrow edema is to have a look at the T1 weighted sequence. As long as you still have fat marrow signal intensity here, then it's just reactive bone marrow edema. And only if the T1 weighted signal is as low as the signal of muscle, then you have basically an osteomyelitis. At least that is what I use as a criteria and in this case here we can see that this is still fatty marrow here even up to here and we start to see some uh, darker areas here at the very distal portion of the distal phalanx here which are consistent with osteomyelitis. So if I had to draw a line basically this portion here, here and here that would be the osteomyelitis and this is still preserved fat marrow and because we still have bone marrow edema all the way up to here we are dealing with, with, with a lot of reactive bone marrow edema. Because in the foot we are dealing with small structures and very thick slices it's worthwhile to have a second plane and in this case 
and we have the sagittal plane here. Now let's move on to the greater toe and you can see the ulster here, nice reaching here up to the bone and we can again see the bone marrow edema affecting basically all of the distal phalanx and we have still the preserved fat marrow here in the proximal portion whereas we have really a dizzy uh, bone, uh, hypointense bone signal here at the distal portion so all this here is infected with this haziness of the cortical bone and then starting from here we have preserved fatty marrow and that would be just the uh, reactive bone marrow edema down here and the distal portion is infected with osteomyelitis. Now to, just to give you an impression here how this looks like after administration of gadolinium you can basically see the defect here much better so this is very a large ulcer here reaching up to the bone and what you can start to see is that you can better see the bone so you have better chances to delineate the outer margins of the bone here at the level of the osteomyelitis where we have these hypointense areas before gadolinium and it's nicely visible here after gadolinium. But for the distinction osteomyelitis versus no osteomyelitis I don't think gadolinium really helps. Sometimes it's worth giving if you in addition to osteomyelitis want to rule out some abscesses or something like that. It is my pleasure to announce two new patrons of my channel who support me and that's Rohi and Chet. Hi guys, thanks for your support and also thanks to all my other patrons for their continuing support here. If you want to know more about Patreon and what you get for exclusive content, go over on my Patreon page, you'll find the link somewhere down here below. And if you have any questions about the Patreon, then just comment down below in the comment section of this video. So let's apply the same criteria as before to this patient. Here we have the T1-weighted sequences, here with gadolinium, without fat saturation, and here just a term sequence. And we can see we have quite a pronounced bone marrow edema in the calcaneus here. And along with this image, we would have difficulties to assess this for osteomyelitis or not. So obviously we have the ulcer here, which is close to the bone, and we have this bone marrow edema, a little bit more intense here at this level. On the T1-weighted sequence, we have trouble here on the sagittal view because we have a oblique orientation of the margin here and therefore it's better to assess the bone on a proper axial or coronal depending on your nomenclature. And we can see that we really have a nice contour here and all this signal here is not as hypointense as the musculature so this is just a little bit hypointense because we have this reactive bone marrow edema and up here this bone marrow is fatty it's normal it's just one little corner here where we have some hypointense changes on a t1-weighted sequence that might be consistent with a beginning osteomyelitis here and here again to emphasize side by side Let's make this a little bit bigger. This is the margin. Here is the corner where we had some high point tense changes on the other T1-weighted sequence. But all the rest here, this is not osteomyelitis. This is just the reactive bone marrow edema. This next patient had an infection here in the skin and the clinician was worried about osteomyelitis. So they did an MRI. We can see this marker here. We have some subcutaneous edema, a little bit of swelling maybe, distally. But is this osteomyelitis or not? Now we have learned that we have to first look at the stir sequence or term sequence just to get an overview. We don't have a bone marrow edema, we have some cystic formation here. It's more a pre-existing erosion, probably with gout or something like that. But we don't have a bone marrow edema and especially on a T1-weighted sequence we have preserved bone marrow fat. It's just normal fatty marrow. There is no osteomyelitis and no reactive bone marrow edema. So no osteomyelitis in this case. Here in this case we have a T1 and a term sequence and best way to look for the osteomyelitis is the term sequence. First locate the problematic areas but most likely you will have this information from your referring physician and you can see here in the, the fourth digit or fourth toe that we have high signal intensity here in the, to the, in the middle and distal phalanx. Uh, we can not really see a proper bone here. The proximal phalanx has 
some little bit bone marrow edema here and the distal head, but otherwise it's unremarkable. Now the clue here again is the T1-weighted sequence, and you can see that the bone here of the proximal phalanx has normal fatty marrow, so it's not affected, but the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx is hypointense in this T1-weighted signal, in this T1-weighted sequence, and we cannot see any fatty marrow. Maybe just the tip here is not affected, but all the rest is full of uh, pus and neutrophils and all the other ugly stuff that sits there that I don't know so much about. So this is an extensive osteomyelitis here of these two bones. However, in this case, it's an easy diagnosis because this was already uh, known from the radiograph and I'm not sure why they did TMR in the end. So and this is the last patient and you can see he has a he has a club foot deformity. This is important because the MR images look a little bit strange. But these are the important sequences and you can see we have two term sequences and two T1 weighted sequences and you can immediately see here from this term sequence that we have bone marrow edema here at the Taylor head and the Taylor neck here. Strong bone marrow edema also nicely depicted here as you can see here and in the skin overlying there probably a small ulcer. So is this osteomyelitis or not? What you want to do is have a look this one here, have a look at the T1 sequence and you can see that we have pretty hypointense signal intensity here at the level of this protuberance in the Taylor head and this has the same signal intensity as the musculature, which is not visible here because it's all fatty degenerated, but basically this signal intensity has the same or lower signal intensity as the muscles and therefore is consistent with osteomyelitis. Just zoom in here and you can see this portion here has a darker signal intensity as the rest of the talus. Here this is just normal fatty marrow, here we have a little bit of lower signal intensity, but it's not as hypointense as musculature on a normal T1 weighted sequence. But this one here is, so this is the osteomyelitis, this is the reactive bone marrow edema, and this is just the normal bone, which is not affected, not even by the bone marrow edema, as you can see here on this sequence. That's it for this week, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, just comment down below and I will answer any comment that you, or question that you have there. And with that, see you next week. Thank you.